Hi, welcome to another exciting Unity tutorial with me, Romy Fauzi. In this video, I'm going to share and introduce a new action that I've created, a actions that belong to the physics category, which are the get overlap sphere and the get overlap box here, as you can see. And I will put the custom actions link in the description below, and you'll need to import those action to follow this video here. And basically, this action will grab an object that are inside the radius of the parameter of this actions here and store to the array of game object. And we can loop through those game object array to do the action that we want to. For example, here I'm playing the dead animation and you can do something else. For example, decreasing the health of the enemy and other stuff. Here in the physics category, we do have an explosion force or explosion here. And this can trigger explosion to a rigid body object but it won't store those object into an array so this will only move or give a force to those rigid body objects and with this action it will store all of the game object into a array variable and we can loop through those variables so this is what we are going to create in this video here and if we click on the barrel it will explode and as you can see if this explode it will kill all of the enemy here and you'll see that inside the array game object variable, we grab all of the character game object into this array variable. Okay, so let's start work on it. So I have created the scene here with four characters and an environment. And we want to test out this new action that I have created. So this get overlap action, there are two type of the actions, which is get overlap spear and the get overlap box. And we can use these actions to grab any object that has collider or rigid body near or inside the radius of the sphere or the box gizmo. So the first thing that I have already set up is the character and the character has a capsule collider and also an animator component attached to it. And the animator component is basically consists of two state of animation. The first one would be the idle animation and the second one would be the dead animation. And all of these characters are using the same animator. So now let's just create a object that can explode in the middle here. I'm going to go to the asset create barrels that I've already import and all of the asset that I've used in this project, I will put the links in the description. Okay, so let's open the prefabs folder. I'm going to drag the first barrel here and I'm going to zero out the transform. So it's in the middle and I want to also add an explosion to this barrel here. So uh, in order to do that, I've already import the particle effect examples from Unity. And here under the fire and explosion effects, we have prefabs folder and I'm going to drag the big explosion as a child of the barrel here. And let's just zero out the value here. Okay. And now it's currently looping because the looping option is enabled. So we want to disable this. I'm going to press Alt and then click on the expand button here so we can expand all of the children and then select all of them and let's just uncheck the looping option here okay and then we want to also disable the big explosion on start here so let's just disable the game object and now in order to use the get overlap action we can use it in our fsm so i'm going to create a new fsm here on the barrel game object and we want to create a mechanism where if we click this barrel, it's going to explode. So let's just pick the mouse pick event here. And in order for this action to work, we need to add a rigid body or collider. So I'm going to add a collider here. I'm going to add a box collider. And let's just set the size. I'm going to set this to 0 0.7 and also 0 0.7 on the Z axis and set the Y to be around 1.25 and push this by 0 0.6. Okay, so we have the collider covers the model here. And now we want to create a new event. So let's just create a new pick event. And the other one will be the explode. And the next one will be the loop. We want to loop through the resulting array of game objects that has been grabbed by the get overlap action. And then after we created those event here, we want to go to the 
pick event under the mouse down event here. So let's just add the pick and let's create a new state here. And for the second state, we want to call this do explode. And for exploding, first we want to activate the child object, the big explosion here. So let's just activate game object. And for the game object, let's just specify game object and then we can drag this child game object here. And disable the recursive. And now we want to use the get overlap action here. So if we go to the physics category here, you'll see that we will have the get overlap box and the get overlap spear. And I'm going to use the get overlap spear, but the box is actually the same with spear, but it has different uh, value. For the spear, it uses radius to define the size, but for box, it uses vector tree value to define the box size. And the rest is the same. So let's just use the get overlap spear here. And here, if we want to see the radius, we can just enable the draw gizmo and it will show once we increase the size here. And you see, if I just slide or scrub the radius size, you see that we have this wire sphere. And we can approximate or we can estimate the blast radius and which character will get hit with this radius here. So first, let's just set this to 3 and this will hit all of the character. And for the position, we can define either using the owner or a specific position. And if you want to use specific position then you need to set this to a vector tree variable or you can just disable the use vector and set a specific value here but for this example i'm going to use the owner so i'm going to set this back to variable and set this to none and for the array we need to create a new game object array so i'm going to create a new variable and let's just call this array game object and we have a boolean option called include owner and if this check the overlap sphere will also include the owner but if this unchecked then it will only grab the other object that isn't the owner and for the layer mask you need to set this to a certain layer i'm going to set this to default because all of the character here are using the layer default but if you use different layer then you need to set those filter to that specific layer and this draw gizmo here will only be drawn if you select the state here if we unselect this then you won't be having this gizmo and the other option that we need to set is uh, we can just leave this as it is but if you want you can just send an event when a game object is found or if the array size is greater than zero and here i'm going to add the i'm going to add the transition explode and let's just create a new state for looping the game object here so let's just connect this here and we want to go to the explode event when a game object is found and here to loop the resulting array game object we can use the array get next and here it has the n index so n index is basically the maximum value of the array member so in order to do that we need to grab the length of our get overlap sphere here so we can use the array length action and for the array here we can just set the array game object that we've just created for the get overlap sphere here and the length we want to set this to a new variable and let's just call this length and we don't want to check every frame and here the start index should be zero but the end index should be the length that we've just grabbed in the previous state for the array we want to set this to array game object and for the loop event we need to set the transition first and then pick that transition loop here and we want to store the individual game object from our array to a result variable so let's just create a new variable and we can just call this current game object okay so we don't need to store the index because we won't be using that and here we want to create a new state and then go to that state from the loop transition and inside the state here, we want to trigger the animator. So we can just pick the, sorry, animator, play. And with play, we can just play directly using the state name here. And as you can see here in the animator, I've already set the dead animation. So I can just type the dead as a state name here. And it will transition to this 
animation automatically. And we want to add a finish transition. Once it finished playing the animation, we want to connect this to the second state here. But for the game object, we want to use the specific game object of each the member of the array game object here. So we can use this current game object variable because this will keep or hold the individual game object inside this array game object in a loop. So let's just use variable and then pick the current game object. And this will ensure that the character that has the animator will play the dead animation. Okay, so I think we've done set up the FSM here. So let's just go to the game view here. Save the scene and I'm going to test this. And let's try to click on this barrel here. And there you go. If we click the barrel, all of the characters play the dead animation. And if we go to the variables here, you'll see that under the array game object, we gr we have grabbed all of the character and including the bridge damage here. But since the bridge damage doesn't have the animator, so it doesn't play any animation. And if you want to exclude this bridge damage, we can just set all of this character to a specific layer other than default. So for example, we can just add an enemy layer and select all of the character here and just set the layer to enemy. And if we go back to the barrel and the FSM here, under the get overlap spear, we can just pick the enemy layer and save this again. And if we press play, and if we try to explode the barrel again here, you see all of the character play the dead animation here. And if we go to variables, under the gear game object, you see that we only grab the character because the character is the only objects that has the enemy tag attached to it. And the other are set to default. So we can use the layer to filter out the object that we want to grab and the get overlap box works exactly the same as the get overlap spear action. So thanks a lot for watching and I hope you enjoy this short video and also find this custom action useful. And if you like this video, hit that like button and do subscribe and click that notification bell. So you'll get notification from my channel when I upload a new video. See you in the next video. Bye.